Hello, this is Father David. Here on the final meditation of the Apostles' Fast uh, 2023, and this is on June 29th, this will be a day where, <coughs> God willing, we have within our, our churches the Divine Liturgy for the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul, and we break our fast following the reception of Holy Communion on the day of. And the meditation today is from our Father among the Saints, St. John Chrysostom, in praise of St. Paul. And so on this great day, we, we hear what St. John says as a praise of this chief of the apostles. He says, the blessed Paul, in whose honor we are assembled today, was a light to the entire world. Yet at the time of his call by God, he lost the sight of the light of his eyes. The blessed Paul manifesting the power of human zeal to enable us to fly to heaven without the help of angels, archangels, and the other heavenly powers, at one time bids us imitate Christ through his example, saying, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. St. Paul was the noblest of men and the most outstanding example of the nobility of human nature and of its possibilities for virtue. Consider Paul, and you will see that mortality is in fact our greatest, our greatest blessing. For if Paul were not mortal, he could not say, or rather he could not show what he said through his deeds, that I die daily. I affirm it by the very pride that I take in you, in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> what a strange thing to say, at least from a human point of view. We have the divine liturgy, which speaks of victory over death, which speaks of the body and blood of Christ given for the life of the world and its salvation. We celebrate it on this day, and yet here we have St. John Chrysostom saying that mortality is in fact our greatest blessing. And St. Paul used his mortality to say that I die daily. He also said, whether I live or I die, I am the Lord's. I belong to the Lord. You know, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There was this sense for him, a complete and total understanding of the temporality of human life. You know, we as Christians sometimes are, uh, I believe, you know, the, the, the accusation of Nietzsche that Christians had no joy. I believe it was Father Alexander Schmemann who said that this was the worst accusation that could ever be brought against uh, Christians, is that they have no joy. And oftentimes it can be that Christians seeking to avoid sin will completely demonize and, and call as evil the things that God has created. And they won't enjoy uh, beautiful things, good things, at least in moderation. Or they will uh, look down dourly upon people who do. But it isn't to say that the things of this world, the creations that God has made, the creatures that God has made, the things that we have been given, even in this broken existence to enjoy, it isn't that they're bad. But we Christians must see those things and indeed our own lives as temporary. And always, this is what St. Paul had for, you know, front and center in his mind. First and foremost, that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Indeed, death is inevitable. Death is something that we should always bear in mind as inevitable, unavoidable. And while it should not keep us or pull us back from enjoying the goodness and beauty that is within this life and that we should receive and give thanks to God as the giver of all good things. 
Rather, let us also see it through the prism, the necessary correction like a corrective lens, which will take this world that we see and put it in its proper perspective, that it is temporary, that it is fleeting, that it will pass away before God makes all things to become new and eternal. Let us not love merely this existence, merely this life, but let us see all of these good things in light of what is to come, in light of the goodness and the eternality that is to come, that we would use this life in function of the next, that we would live this life in preparation for the life that is to come, the day that has no end, when, by God's grace and through the prayers of his holy apostles Peter and Paul, and of all the holy apostles, whom we will commemorate tomorrow as a whole, we might enter into that unfading and eternal life which has been prepared for us through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be all glory, honor, and worship, together with his Father who has no beginning in the all-holy good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thank you for accompanying me through this uh, short uh, fast of the church. Uh, may God be with those uh, of our brothers who are uh, on the, 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 the Julian calendar that will have 13 more days of fasting. May God grant them uh, fruitfulness and sobriety and a preparation for their feast of Saints Peter and Paul in 13 days. Uh, and may God bless us all as we uh, celebrate this radiant feast today. Lord God bless you. Uh, Lord willing, uh, come August 1st, we will do this again uh, with a document for the 14 days of the Dormition Fast. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. May God bless you. And Lord willing, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.